Now that you've identified the cue, routine, and reward of your habit, it will be easy to implement techniques to eliminate it. So congratulations on that. The next step is to bring the bad habit to conscious attention. Habits are triggered subconsciously. So much of the time, they go unnoticed. You don't realize you're biting your nails until somebody else might remind you. And you don't realize you're picking scabs until you start bleeding. So you must make sure that you're conscious of your habit every time. Just identifying the cue, routine, and reward goes a long way to promote awareness. But there are more steps you can take. You can connect the cue or the routine with something that will get your attention whenever you perform your habit. This is different for every habit, but here are a few examples. To stop biting your nails, you can paint your fingernails with a special polish that, polish that tastes bitter or put bandages on your fingertips. You can also use behavioral conditioning for any habit. Put a rubber band around your wrist and whenever you do your bad habit, snap it hard. This will make you more and more aware of the habit as you start to associate it with the feeling of the snap. So the next time you're tempted by a craving, the snap will come to mind and you'll worry about having to snap the band. You can also ensure awareness by using what I call procedure design. Procedure design is a way to remind yourself to do something at a certain time or place. It creates a link from a specific situation to an action you want to perform. It's very simple and can be very powerful when used regularly. It's future planning, like a boxer shadow boxes his opponent before fighting him to know exactly how he'll act. Procedure design is also known as an implementation intention, and it takes this form. If X, then Y. For example, if I have a fast food craving, I'll do 20 push-ups instead. Or if I bite my nails, I'll kiss my hand instead. These can be used for anything though. When I walk out the front door, I'll, I'll always remember to double check that I have my keys. The trick is to visualize the scenario as clearly as possible in your head beforehand. To remember your keys, you clearly visualize yourself walking through the door and remembering to double check your keys. So the next time you experience that same situation, you'll automatically remember what you intended to do. To stop fast food cravings, I first documented the cue, routine, and reward of my habit. That was important to ensure that I was aware I was having a craving in the first place so I could replace it with something else. I also used procedure design. So here are a few of my procedures that I created. When I get a craving, I'll just have patience. I'll start looking for a healthy recipe online and realize that the craving will pass in just a few minutes. Whenever I'm driving to the fast food restaurant, I will go to the grocery store instead to buy healthy food I can prepare. That way I'll have leftovers for the next few days. Whenever I've bought fast food and I'm on my way back to my house, I'll throw it away before I get inside. See how I used a few of my procedures at different times during the habit routine, different stages of the habit? When it comes to food cravings, I found that I was usually consciously aware of the craving, but I rarely tried to redirect my attention to something else, like eating healthy food or any other activity, while I waited for the craving to pass. Instead, I just debated with myself, and that just made the craving worse because I was thinking more and more about it. And that was the real problem. When I became aware that I was debating with myself, I eventually learned to redirect my attention somewhere else, focus on something constructive. That prevented me from getting stuck in a debate about going to, going to grab fast food. And thinking about fast food would make my craving even stronger, so replacement of the routine was key for me. The procedure design helped a lot. Whenever I would get into a situation where I was going to get fast food, the procedures I created acted as checkpoints where I could sort of eject from the habit routine. If I missed the first checkpoint, which was patience during a craving, as I mentioned, I could go to the grocery store to buy healthy, cheaper food. If I missed that checkpoint, I could throw the food away at the end. Each time you follow through, on the habit makes it worse 
and each time you stop the habit in progress is progress to eliminate cravings. Just realizing that goes a long way to helping you break the habit. Even if I'd already bought the food, throwing it away prevented me from getting more severe cravings next time. So that's all for now. I hope procedure design is really helpful to you. It's very effective, but remembering to use it is probably the hardest part. Use it regularly and you'll be successful no matter what habits you want to create.